Dmitry Kaminsky is an innovative entrepreneur and investor active in the fields of biotech, fintech, longevity, and artificial intelligence. He is co-founder and managing partner at Deep Knowledge Ventures. He also serves as co-director of the Secretariat in the UK Parliament, overseeing the Longevity International's Cooperation Development Division. He has a major interest in healthy longevity, which is reflected in his business, research, and public activities. Dimitri has launched a $1 million USD prize for the first person to reach their 123rd birthday in order to promote healthy longevity. Dimitri is the author of Longevity Industry 1.0, and Biomarkers of Human Aging, and his two new books are coming soon. And with that, let me start the interview. So welcome to Modern Health Man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hello, Richard, and hello, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be with you today. So, Dimitri, could you tell us a little bit about your background and what, what led you to study aging or, or to invest in aging, I guess? Mm. Well, uh, initially my background, it was uh, IT, software. Then I was uh, a little bit in the business of uh, fintech. Uh, approximately around 2013, I met several scientists, uh, you know, Jira scientists, including, uh, uh, including Cobra Gray, first of all, and uh, several others. Uh, I visited Oxford and Cambridge University. I attended uh, several conferences. Uh, the comments were, you know, about anti-aging. And uh, by that time, uh, what I heard there, it was quite futuristic. You know, it's, uh, for me, it was something very unusual and uh, very futuristic. However, uh, when I actually, you know, uh, had uh, more, uh, let's say, significant dialogues with those scientists, uh, so I actually understood that uh, this is not uh, sci-fi. This is not, it's futuristic, but... It's not uh, undoable. So it's uh, the matter of, uh, you know, some kind of engineering, uh, right? Engineering and uh, uh, maybe that, uh, you know, something what uh, seems to be feasible in 20, 30 years, a very, very far future, maybe some of that uh, could be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, brought uh, closer to kind of to, to current, uh, current reality. And, uh, but at the same time, I had zero knowledge, zero expertise in uh, biotech, biomedicine, or any, any, anything related to life sciences. So what I did, uh, I actually assembled a team of uh, analysts, uh, international team of analysts, and we established a company, Aging Analysis Agency. It was done eight years ago, and uh, you know, during years, we were supporting work of that company, which became... Uh, just for understanding, currently in Deep Knowledge Group, we have in total uh, 10 analytical subsidiaries. Five of them are focused on life sciences, including Deep Pharma Interns, Neurotech Analytics, uh, Femtech Analytics, um, uh, Edge Analytics Agency. And uh, another five, they're focused on artificial intelligence, Deep Tech, uh, you know, different kind of, uh, for example, we have one of the recent uh, companies, it's Space Tech Analytics, so it's about space exploration. However, in that company, we also uh, enhancing their research on the matter of space medicine and interconnections of space medicine towards uh, longevity, longevity medicine on Earth. There's a lot of overlap. But uh, where are we reading all this? Uh, among our analytical subsidiaries, Aging Analytics was the first, and you know, I would say personally, uh, within our group and uh, among our partners, uh, I'm uh, applying quite significant efforts to prioritize the work of particular Aging Analytics agents because for us, Longevity, it's, uh, you know, let's say the ultimate and best possible business. At the same time, we are very much interested in practical applications of longevity, in particular for my personal longevity and uh, some other partners. Group. But to go back to your question, so, uh, you know, the point was uh, once I get acquainted that uh, there is such science as geoscience, the science of aging, then I, uh, you know, got some understanding that uh, practical solutions, uh, they could be theoretically achievable, not in 10, 20, 30 years, but uh, a little bit uh, closer. And it is a little bit closer reality as it was back in 2013. Now it's absolutely reality. And uh, we just kind of applying quite significant efforts, resources, uh, budgets uh, to enhance the work of our analytical subsidiaries with the focus on life sciences, first of all, longevity. Right. Thank you. And yeah, I, I mean, I see that there's so much promise, but it's, it's 
how you move forward that is, is kind of difficult at the moment. So you have written a, a couple of books on longevity, uh, on longevity, like the Longevity Industry 1.0, and more recently, The Biomarkers of Human Longevity, which is really about the longevity industry. So how would you characterize the longevity industry as it is now? Um, yes, very good question. And by the way, uh, the major, the major uh, challenge of longevity industry, as it is, it's extreme uh, broadness, you know, extreme complexity. It's the most biggest, the most uh, broadest, the most, uh, you know, kind of, uh, it's much more bigger industry than anything else. If you compare it with, for example, with retail estate uh, industry, which is big, or, you know, maybe natural resources. Uh, so you will not find any other industry uh, which will actually, you know, could be comparable in the sense that uh, longevity industry can literally dwarf any other single industry. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, this at the same time uh, creates some complexity in the sense that uh, we spent uh, uh, that time, that period of time between 2013 and 2018, just to understand what is actually longevity industry, uh, just for understanding even before uh, this word longevity industry, it became, or at least longevity, it became common on starting from 2017, before 2017, most of the people were using the word anti-aging. But anti-aging was uh, diluted, you know, by different, um, let's say, companies or products uh, with some kind of, you know, pl like different clips of food supplements, which in the best case scenario providing placebo effect, in many cases actually negative effect. And that's why uh, with the time, uh, this term anti-aging uh, gradually evolved uh, to longevity. And then, uh, approximately, it was in 2018 when the Aging Agency first published uh, a big analytical report. It was uh, the science of longevity and the business of longevity. In total, it was 150, uh, 100, 500 pages. And actually, they profiled, you know, the entire landscape of all uh, scientists, all laboratories, all, you know, uh, let's say, uh, scientific candidates which are working in this field uh, as it was in 2018 and the very same with uh, business entities uh, and uh, that was probably the first time when we applied this term longevity industry at the same time we created uh, in particular on behalf of agent agency we created the first iteration of framework for longevity industry what what in particular it includes so it includes uh, the science of aging general science uh, the medicine uh, the you know precision personalized preventive medicine before medicine uh, probably now it's already should be named as uh, longevity medicine. At least you know it's evolving. We, uh, all we are to, what we are talking, it's uh, every year it's evolving. You know, and uh, that's why what was uh, very abstract and theoretical back in 2013, it became quite tangible, very you know close to practice in 2018. And this term, you know, was uh, coined longevity industry. And now in 2021, we are already uh, talking about very exact specifics, you know, applying very tangible metrics such as biomarkers of longevity, not just, just uh, biological biomarkers, but very specific uh, biomarkers. And uh, longevity industry also includes uh, age tech. These are products and services, but modernized, you know, using uh, uh, IT, using uh, mobile applications uh, for to optimize uh, health and quality of life of uh, elderly people. And also longevity financial industry, which is huge, which is kind of, uh, you know, counted at least uh, uh, 15 trillion of uh, cures probably uh, currently, maybe even more. Plus to that, uh, there, is, uh, there are national healthcare budgets. Some of them actually focused on the preventive medicine, on, you know, advanced diagnostics. And uh, let's say some of uh, parts of those budgets, they could be considered as also part of longevity industry. And also there's uh, quite significant, um, it's not probably, it could be considered particularly as an industry, but it's a very important uh, uh, part which should be taken into consideration. It's about social implications, you know, different uh, ethical, social issues. One of them, which is very significant, is ageism, that uh, all people, even in very, uh, very well-developed societies, for example, in the UK, in many cases, they actually discriminate, you know, it's uh, uh, like uh, they're considered as uh, some kind of uh, not active part of uh, society. They're kind of, uh, kind of partially disabled. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, they have voting power. So it's uh, 
you see it's like uh, there's a lot of disproportions uh, those people they're actually you know real and uh, capable members of societies but in many cases they consider this you know something like uh, uh, not significant and this, this part it's uh, let's say six significant component on, in, of the industry which do not have particular let's say technological financial implications but it's uh, one of the you no know, core parts which uh, should uh, be taken uh, in account because it's it's about you know ethical way of doing business and all other activities in the field even uh, even science should be uh, done in case of longevity uh, science cannot be done just as a science it should be ethical way of doing science so there was a lot that i'd like to go back and kind of jump into on that mm -hmm. um, but that was that seemed fairly uh, positive I, I mean what i hear from a number of other people is especially like preventative medicine it, it's not preventative medicine it's generally fixing people when they become ill so are you seeing that there is a move towards more preventative medicine um, yes. So first of all, again, all these terms, what does it mean preventive medicine? What does it mean, you know, digital healthcare, precision medicine, uh, uh, personalized medicine? Uh, all these terms, they are evolving. You know, how they were, uh, uh, the perception of these terms, some of them actually uh, haven't been existing, for example, eight years ago. Some of them, you know, uh, became uh, well-known two, three years ago. Uh, new term, precision health. It's now becoming, you know, more and more uh, well known, and longevity medicine. So this precision health and longevity medicine, these are the major terms which will, uh, you know, become the core of longevity industry and uh, understanding what does it mean, health and longevity and preventive medicine. Because what is now considered as healthcare, it's not actually healthcare; it's sick care. It's it's reactive care. It's reactive uh, reactive for fixing. Uh, uh, the very late stage of uh, pathology, which you actually already, you know, uh, transformed into actual, you know, uh, like real um, uh, diseases, which in many cases are not uh, fixable, not treatable. Uh, you, like in the best case scenario, doctors can, you know, just kind of like, uh, uh, like a little bit uh, soften the negative effects. Now, precision health, it's uh, much more uh, advanced compared with precision medicine. Precision medicine is like Something like what could be considered uh, P4 medicine, like uh, precision, personalized, a little bit preventive, but mostly it's, you know, just kind of like a modern, uh, eff efficient, uh, quite kind of like, uh, advanced technologically medicine. But this is uh, nothing to do with precision health because precision health should start much more earlier. And th this is uh, precision health. It's much less about medicine. It's much more about data science, about, you know, real super advanced uh, diagnostic, prognostic, and uh, extremely early stage prevention, like with micro doses, uh, micro interventions, you know, with uh, a very efficient adjustment of uh, lifestyle. Because for your understanding, most of the doctors, they do not know at all what does it mean longevity medicine. Longevity medicine is different with uh, medicine. This is for a second. 99,99% uh, 99 of uh, uh, wellness, uh, lifestyle cultures, or, you know, different kind of experts, uh, their recommendations about lifestyle, uh, to do fitness, to do diets, to do some kind of adjustments to lifestyle, they are coming from uh, just their personal assumptions. So there is no, there's not enough data, there's no real data science, there's not enough like really scientific studies, there is not enough uh, practical, tangible evidence, what exact, uh, you know, uh, let's say regimes should, uh, should be applied to particular people, more of it, not even particular. For each person, uh, the adjustments to their lifestyle, including diets, uh, fitness, sport, uh, so on and so forth, should be, first of all, very personalized. Second, should be uh, precise, more of it. For example, if I am currently in London, uh, and uh, here we have, you know, exact temperature currently, and humidity, and many other uh, factors. So my uh, daily regime should be uh specific for this location if i will move for example for hong kong for example for one week uh most likely i will have i mean i don't uh we don't know yet how but the, uh, the mode regime you know the let's say specific uh, approach should will have to be adjusted because uh, humidity uh intensity of sun and uh, some other parameters will be different so this will Maybe in my personal case, maybe it will not affect. And maybe if, you know, if I would be, let's say, 70 years now, 
uh, I will have to adjust. So when we are talking about precision health and we are talking about uh, longevity medicine and we, when we are talking about specific uh, healthy lifestyle, which can extend, uh, you know, period of healthy longevity, uh, this is much beyond, uh, this should take into account really advanced uh, data science and I would say artificial intelligence. And here we are going, uh, you know, here we are uh, coming to this uh, topic of uh, panels of biomarkers of aging longevity, personalized, data science driven and uh, supervised by artificial intelligence. In, uh, artificial intelligence in the sense that as if it is your personal, you know, personal AI system, which is taking care to analyze in real mode, uh, at least, you know, with daily adjustments, uh, all these uh, uh, points about uh, diets and, you know, kind of all, kind of like physical activity and so on and so forth, like lifestyle.